Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject weldability of metals and we are talking about the weldability of stainless steels. In the previous presentation, we have talked about the various types of the stainless steels and the properties of the stainless steels, the way by which their weldability is uh, affected. Uh, in this presentation, we will uh, basically uh, seeing the weldability of the various of various types of the stainless steels. Uh, then we will see the kind of the welding processes which can be used and the way by which it, if, uh, these affect the, the properties of the stainless steel weld joints. Then we will see the kind of uh, the cleaning uh, precautions are needed for uh, uh, before welding of stainless steels the kind of the fillers which are used for um, the welding uh, of the stainless steels by different processes. So, uh, starting with the um, weldability of the different types of the steels, the major factors that determine the ease of welding of the various uh, stainless steels like marked and static stainless steels. Normally, these are high in carbon and form the hard martensite. Since uh, uh, the thermal expansion coefficient of the stainless steels is high, the hard martensite is being formed. So, the residual stresses will tend to increase the cracking of these steels, especially in presence of the hydrogen. So, the weldability of the martensitic stainless steel to a great extent is influenced by the embrittlement tendency due to the martensite formation and the cold cracking tendency in, in presence of the hydrogen and the residual stress development. Then there is the ferritic stainless steel. Uh, which remains, uh, the, these steels remains in ferritic state on heating from the room temperature to the melting point. So, there is no allotropic behavior, there is no change of phase and uh, due to the application of heat that is why the ferritic stainless steels experience significant grain growth in the heat affected zone and because of this grain growth toughness of the stainless steel weld joints is badly compromised. So, the grain size and the toughness uh, will be primarily determining the validability of the stainless ferritic stainless steel. In case of the austenitic stainless steel uh, basically the solidification cracking tendency uh, determines the validability of the stainless steels and another common problem encountered is the weld decay. So, this uh, solidification cracking occurs due to the limited ductility, higher residual stress stresses at uh, um, elevated temperature promotes the solidification cracking or the hot tearing tendency. Uh, the well decay um, occurs due to the formation of the chromium carbide at the grain boundary leading to the reduced corrosion resistance of the heat uh, affected zone. So, um, uh, the another problem which is observed with the austenitic stainless steel is the sigma phase formation. Uh, this is uh, primarily observed in case of the high chromium austenitic stainless steels where um, uh, iron, chromium, uh, carbon intermetallic compounds are uh, formed in form of the sigma phase uh, which is uh, brittle of the high hardness and this in turn uh, reduces the 
notch toughness of the austenitic stainless steel um, weld joints if the sigma phase formation takes place while the validability of the precipitation hardenable stainless steel depends upon the mechanism of the strengthening whether some kind of the precipitates are being formed or the martensite in very controlled way is formed. So, depending upon the mechanism whether the dissolution or a tempering or over tempering of the martensite is taking place and accordingly the properties of the heat affected zone will be influenced uh, in case of the weld joints of the precipitation hardenable stainless steels. Uh, now, uh, in these steels, uh, stainless steels when uh, these are processed, uh, most of the stainless steels when these are uh, uh, added with the titanium, niobium or aluminum to impart the specific properties. Uh, the, these additions are made in stainless steels to impart a specific set of the properties so that uh, their corrosion resistance, high temperature resistance in form of oxidation or high temperature uh, strength as well as the kind of the mechanical property enhancement. Uh, can be uh, realized. So, their additions, whenever these additions are made, uh, we need the special care or precautions during the welding of the stainless steels. Uh, now, we will see uh, the kind of the joint performance which is realized in case of the stainless steels. Since the different uh, stainless steels like martensitic, ferritic, austenitic and precipitation hardenable stainless steels. Mm, the base and the heat affected zone HAZ and the weld metal. The properties of the uh, joints to a great extent depends upon the homogeneity of the structure and the mechanical properties across the weld. So, what is the kind of the variation on moving from the base metal to the heat affected zone then through the weld metal and then again heat affected zone. The way by which these three zones of a weld joint are affected due to the weld thermal cycle or weld metal which has been developed that will be determining the joint efficiency. So, as per the kind of metal system, there can be lot of variation in the uh, properties of the HAZ and the weld metal with respect to the base metal. Because all metals, uh, all types of the stainless steels do not respond equally to the weld thermal cycle. So, in few cases the HAZ is a uh, uh, the properties of the HAZ are compromised while in other cases properties of the weld metal are compromised. So, which will be the weak zone that will depend upon the kind of the weld thermal cycle or the welding procedure being applied and the kind of the stainless steel being used. So, the zones may be strengthened uh, in one case and uh, it may be a uh, given zone may be weakened in another case as per the steel and the welding procedure. For good joint efficiency, it is important that property variation across the different zones are uh, the, that property variation is limited so that the joint can uh, really um, perform good as uh, per the requirement. Now, talking about the welding processes which are used for uh, welding of the or the joining of the stainless steels. Now, uh, all common welding processes like 
arc welding processes, laser beam welding, electron beam welding, uh, then uh, we have uh, uh, friction welding can be used, resistance welding can be used. So, uh, like SMAW, uh, PAW, GTAW, uh, GMAW and even SAW process also can be used for uh, welding of the stainless steels. Laser and electron beam welding both can be effectively used for welding of stainless steels. Uh, friction stir welding and simple friction welding can be used and all resistance uh, spot welding, seam welding processes can be effectively used for welding since, uh, but the kind of precautions, the kind of consumables which are used will be different for the different welding processes. More specifically to talk about the submerged arc welding because the SMAW, GTA and GMAW processes can be effectively used because they provide the effective shielding. Uh, in case of the submerged arc welding, this process is known to be of the high heat input process. At the same time, it uses, uses the molten flux for shielding purpose. So, uh, molten flux for shielding purpose when it is used, it uh, leads to the modification of weld metal composition in very uncontrolled way. Sometimes addition of the silicon and manganese in the weld metal of the ASS or other stainless steels uh, increases the tendency for the solidification cracking due to the formation of the low melting point phases in the weld metal. So, the control over the composition of the weld metal becomes difficult in case of the submerged arc welding process. This is one uh, issue related to the SAW of the uh, stainless steels. Another one is the heat input. Since the heat input is high, so the cooling rate associated with the weld metal and HAZ will be lower and because of that solidification time will be longer, cooling rate will be lower uh, in the heat affected zone and these combinations in the weld as well as heat affected zone leads to the coarse grain structure in the weld as well as heat affected zone and this in turn reduces the toughness of both weld as well as heat affected zone and that is why whenever possible uh, uh, SAW, no SAW for austenitic stainless steel welding. Uh, if only ASS filler is used because this increases the tendency for solidification cracking. If the filler ASS filler with the uh, about 4 percent of the ferrite filler which will uh, provide the austenitic stainless steel weld metal with the 4 percent ferrite in the weld zone then uh, SAW process can be used even for the welding of the stainless steel, austenitic stainless steel, but to re, uh, in that case uh, the, the grain structure will still be coarser. So, that uh, uh, must be taken care of while developing the weld joint of the ASS using the submerged arc welding process. As far as the resistance welding process is concerned of the stainless steels. As I have said, the stainless steels, they are uh, significantly different uh, from the carbon steels with regard to the thermal expansion coefficient, thermal conductivity and the electrical resistivity. So, uh, high electrical resistivity and low thermal conductivity of the stainless steels facilitates the, the high heat generation generation by the 
I square RT principle. So, greater amount of the heat generation reduces the welding current requirement, reduces the weld cycle time, the time for which current is allowed to flow uh, uh, during the welding. However, uh, due to the higher yield strength of the stainless steels, we need to use the higher electrode pressure for consolidation during the uh, resistance uh, welding process as compared to the stainless um, uh, as compared to the carbon steels. Uh, on the other hand, the oxy fuel gas welding process. Uh, this process is not recommended for welding of the stainless steels because of the poor very poor shielding of the weld metal. So, the protection of the weld metal from the atmospheric gases in case of the in case of the oxy fuel gas welding process is uh, limited and the, the heat input is also high. So, that in turn reduces the cooling rate. So, not recommended for uh, welding of the stainless steels except when the repair welding is to be carried out, the gas welding can be used. Uh, in that case, uh, if at all uh, the repair welding is to be performed, then instead of the oxidizing instead of the oxidizing flame, uh, we use the either neutral flame or carburizing flame or reducing flame. So, instead of oxidizing flame, carburizing or neutral flame is used because the presence of excess oxygen during the uh, repair welding of the ASS, the chromium present will form the chromium oxide and that in turn Cr2O3 or something else will be formed. So, that will be this uh, chromium oxide uh, is a refractory in nature and uh, so uh, and ha is having the melting point chromium oxides having the melting point greater than the melting point of the stainless steel. So, it does not uh, melt uh, uh, during the welding and it may be present in form of the inclusions or it may interfere during the uh, melting of the base metal. So, we need to avoid the presence of excess oxygen uh, during the oxy fuel welding using either neutral flame or the carburizing flame. Uh, so, these are the two, uh, uh, two uh, points as far as the oxy uh, fuel welding is uh, concerned. Now, the protection of the weld metal is uh, concerned for the purpose of the protecting. Why protection is important? You know this is the stainless steel when subjected to the fusion welding using the different types of the welding processes like SMAW or SAW or GTAW or GMAW or PAW. In all these processes, if the protection uh, by the heat source like arc, if the protection is not proper, then oxygen and nitrogen present will interact with the molten metal. Interaction of the oxygen with the chromium in the molten state or the, um, the chromium in the, the zone which is being heated will be leading to the formation of the thick oxide layer. So, the formation of the chromium oxide layer in the molten metal or uh, uh, thick oxide layer in the vicinity of the weld joint, both these are undesirable uh, because because of their refractory nature, these will not be melting and getting fused with the weld metal. These will act as inclusion, these may interfere with the, uh, the melting of the base metal. So, 
uh, the, the, the well metal must be protected to uh, protected from the atmospheric gases so that the chromium oxide formation can be avoided and uh, for this purpose uh, the, the various uh, uh, approaches are used as per the welding process like effective gas shielding plays a very crucial role in protecting the uh, uh, molten metal and the base metal from the atmospheric gases like in case of the gas tungsten arc welding, gas metal arc welding or the plasma arc welding processes. But in case of the shielded metal arc welding, submerged arc welding, special constituents like the sodium or calcium fluorides are used so that uh, uh, it can dissolve the chromium oxide which is being formed during the uh, during the welding of the stainless steel so the formation um, if the fluorides effectively uh, remove the chromium oxides if these are being formed during the welding of the stainless steels but the calcium or the sodium fluorides uh, which are being added to to remove the chromium oxides this uh, these uh, the fluxes uh, uh, where the, the such kind of chlorides are present must be cleaned because these are very corrosive in nature so effective cleaning of such kind of the fluorides become crucial in case of the gta and uh, the other gas shielding uh, based methods no flux is used because in those cases uh, the protection to the weld metal as well as the heat effect protection to the heat affected zone or nearby uh, the zone nearby the weld metal is provided by the inactive or inert shielding gases. Uh, so, we need uh, since there is no mechanism uh, to remove the chromium oxide it, if it is being formed we need very proper cleaning of the, the base metals before welding because if the chromium oxide is present it will not be taken care of by the fluxes since there is no use of the flux in GTM and GM, GMAW process. So, more effective cleaning becomes crucial in case of the GTA and the GMAW process. As far as the cleaning is concerned, cleaning of SS is very crucial uh, especially to remove the chromium oxide if it is present uh, uh, on to the, the prepared on the prepared surfaces like groove as well as the base metal. So, if uh, this is the base metal, so the, the groove being formed needs uh, should be clean and the distance up to which up to the minimum 0.5 inch from the, um, the, the groove surfaces should be prepared uh, so that uh, should be cleaned so that uh, uh, the chromium oxide from the, uh, the base metal uh, or in vicinity of the weld metal can be uh, removed. Uh, there are various uh, um, kind of uh, the methods which are used for cleaning purpose and these methods uh, include like uh, the sand or grit blasting. Uh, this is one uh, mechanical or wire brush cleaning the brush which has not been used for any other purpose of the cleaning uh, then that kind of brush is used for cleaning purpose then machining or uh, grinding of the stainless steel uh, provided the cutting fluid you being used for machining or the grinding is free from chlorides because these chlorides are very 
sensitive for the corrosion of the stainless steels and uh, there is one more method which is very effectively used for removing the oxide layer is the acid pickling acid pickling so basically uh, the 10 to 15 percent hno3 uh, solution is used for uh, uh, removing the oxide layer from the surface of the uh, stainless steel so that uh, uh, the presence of the chromium oxide uh, can be uh, uh, eliminated uh, apart from the removal of the chromium oxides effective cleaning for removing all paints uh, oil grease uh, dust moisture this also should be ensured so that there is no source of the hydrogen hydrocarbons and there is no uh, possibility for carbon pickup because if the stainless steel picks up the carbon during the welding it will promote the formation of the chromium carbide in the weld as well as uh, the heat affected zone and which may promote the weld decay tendency that in turn will be reducing the corrosion resistance of the weld uh, meant in general. Now, uh, the talking about the kind of fillers which are used for welding of the stainless steel, there are three types of the fillers, one is like the bare solid wires. These are normally used with the non-consumable welding processes uh, like the gas tungsten arc welding, plasma arc welding and electron beam welding processes. Uh, but there is another category like where covered electrodes are used. So, in this case uh, basically the stick electrodes are there which are primarily used in the shielded metal arc welding processes and th th there we may add like the calcium fluoride or the sodium fluoride uh, kind of the elements for the better arc uh, stabilizations and uh, there are like uh, the three types of the electrodes which are commonly used in category of the uh, shielded metal arc welding process one is like uh, e triple x um, 1 uh, 5 then 6 and then there is a 13 these are the three most common types of the electrodes uh, based on the kind of uh, the constituents which are being used in the coating material so, it uh, primarily um, contains the lime uh, which uh, uh, is helpful in realizing the deep penetration. So, when the groove is narrow uh, the, the, the E triple X 15 lime based uh, electrode is used. Uh, the, the second one is uh, and it uses basically the DC electrode positive polarity. Uh, in case of the E16, uh, it uses the titania and other arc stabilizers like sodium and potassium. So, it can work with both AC as well as DCEP. It is used for the weld overlays or the weld uh, surfacing applications. Uh, then there is uh, one more uh, uh, electrode 13 which is uh, mainly used for the uh, welding of the, uh, the structure steels used for the um, structural applications. Now uh, uh, then we have uh, the another type of the uh, electrodes which are used for the uh, flux code arc welding purpose and these are uh, designated as like E triple X 1, 2, 3. So, which means no shielding gas 3 is for the no shielding gas use, second is uh, the case where argon plus 2 percent oxygen 
is used and in the case 1 where just R gun is used for the welding purpose along with the, the, the fluxes which are there in the core of the electrode in case of the FCA W process. Now, I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation basically I have talked about the various welding processes, the kind of cleaning methods which are used uh, and the kind of fillers which are available for the welding of the stainless steel steels. Thank you for your attention.